Hi, my name's Steve. Welcome to Howard's Portugal. So would you just look at that? I really don't recall ever having seen a brake disc in worse condition. to get more surface area before I use the rock. Pretty. <sighs> Never looks where the ball's going. So the idea behind starting this channel was to document our move from Hampshire to Portugal and just at the moment we are trying to sell the house and as anyone who has embarked on that particular process knows it never goes to plan and it's always a bit slower than one would hope but we do hopefully have a buyer and that means that we are working towards a time scale and trying to get everything ready which explains quite a few videos about mechanicking putting these old vehicles together and uh, just generally getting ready uh, today i have got to change the brakes on the isuzu um, it's a seven and a half ton truck and we bought that because we know that logistics are going to be needed out in portugal if you buy an old vehicle you've just got to accept that you're going to have to do some work on it yourself. So, thanks very much for watching. I'm going to go and crack on with that. Now, if I had thought that the other side was bad, this is absolutely appalling. And I'm surprised that this truck actually had any ability to stop at all, because the amount of space on the disc that is polished here that you can see um, is absolutely minuscule and this is where the pad has been touching the brake disc and this whole surface both back and front should have been acted upon and you can see on the back there's a very small amount of shiny metal there so that's actually quite worrying still I'm gonna pop this off and uh, we'll see where we go with it. So these are the bolts that hold the caliper onto the caliper mounting. So now that these are undone, I should be able to withdraw the pistons and hopefully remove the brake pads relatively easily. is uh, the problem with deferred maintenance. This job probably should have been done years ago. Let's withdraw that. So, 
There we go, that's the bottom bolt and we've got a bit of rubber on it and you can see that that just really needs to clean up. See that's moving, the, the caliper, here are the pads and this bit's fixed to the truck. This is the caliper and then here are the pistons and they are actioned by the fluid coming down here and that squeezes the disc or should do and uh, puts the brakes on. Okay, so a bit more pressure for this one. Now, I've just got to check something. Probably cause brakes to overflow all over the place. No, not yet. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to suck some out of that reservoir. So, always keep the brake fluid as clean as possible. I'm going to take some out, but I'm not going to put the same stuff back in. So, I withdraw this piston and there we go. Now, brake fluid is nasty, corrosive stuff, so I'm going to find a receptacle just here and I'm going to squirt it into the old tissue that I've used to soak up the muck so far. And we'll dispose of that properly later on. on because we don't want any muck getting into the brake fluid. So, yeah, that's lovely. It's actually moving better than the other side did, which was quite a challenge. And I'll squeeze this as far as possible because I want the pistons to go right back into the caliper because the newer pads are going to be larger and the newer brake discs will be thicker so obviously I'll make my life as easy as possible there we go and that should just lift out now when you take a caliper off be really careful if you're not undoing the brake lines you really do not want to twist them and get them mucked up so I'm just going to place the caliper there and we've got some really nasty looking brake pads here this one's really worn you can see that on the inside on the outside this one has been doing a lot of work and the inside a little bit less so it's going to note the order that I'm taking the uh, things off so that's the lantern squirrel plate and place that down there and hopefully I'll be able to get those out So, Ooh. so you see that this is the wear material for the uh, brake pad. Now that's got a great big ridge in it where it hasn't actually been acting on the uh, the metal of the disc. So let's put that over here. And really, you shouldn't be seeing this corrosion on the brake disc. One thing looks all right and that is the bearing which is good news because we're going to get that off in a minute so the isuzu here one good thing about it is you don't need to do very much to change the brake fits oh my goodness me look at that
That is the worst that I've ever, ever seen. It's a massive indent. Is the camera picking that up? Can we just uh, yeah, it is. show that? The wear characteristic of that particular brake pad is actually truly scary. Right, look at the back here. Do you see? It just, look how rough that is. Like it. Crazy. Now that should be a smooth polished surface. I have a feeling that this is going to be a bit of a challenge to undo, but that's okay. We've got some heat. Hey, another train. So that's the caliper mount and we withdraw that and as you can see it can do with a jolly good clean. If anyone has ever seen a worse brake disc then do comment down below. It's uh, something quite special that. There we go. Ooh. I'm just going to clean up this castle nut and take out the cotter pin. Into there. So I've got everything laid out here as I'm taking it off. And uh, what I'm going to do is just use all this brake, brake cleaner to clean that down. this side you'll be able to see better. It's gonna get some of this grease off here. This is a castle nut. Oh I can see why it's called see. a castle nut. Yeah exactly. It's got the uh, rings. Yeah it's uh, like ridges like the crenellations in it. Yeah. <laughs> and what that's then got it's got this thing here, this pin, this cotter pin. And that goes through, right through the nut and stops it undoing. Because this is... Uh, what holds it mostly together? Well, it's, it stops the, the, uh, the, the nut ro the rotating on the, uh, on the bolt. Yeah. Now, with any luck, we should be able to withdraw this quite easily. Uh, great, great tool. Yeah, yeah. We, don't we have like eight? <laughs> we do have lots of crowbars. I do like crowbars a lot. Very handy. <laughs> so, hopefully that one will come out. Come on. Just that last bit to come through. <sighs> oh. There you go. Ah, there we so go. one cotter pin, so you can see what it is. It's literally a split pin. So let's just try. Oh, there we go. Conventional. Ooh. Did you see how easy that was? Yeah. Let's get some of the muck out of there. So this is. Can you see? There's a key goes into this channel here yeah and that just stops that rotating against the castle nut which then holds that in okay so mind out of the way if you come this side of me I should hopefully be able to just pull this off oh there we go and there 
we have the bearing. I'm just going to place that down over there. And a lot of nasty, crappy old grease. And here we have the worst brake disc in the world. Come over here and look at this. This is absolutely insane. Look at this. This. Corrosion. Bits were flying off it and everything. Yeah, that is just horrendous. These um, are going to be a nightmare to undo. Because they're so corroded. They are. So I'm actually going to heat those up. Harrison. The old and the new. Still warm this one. Yeah, they will be. So put those side to side. Look at the difference. So standing next to the new hive so we've got a little bit of activity going around us. Right, that should be good. Did you hear it bottom out? Yeah. That is now nicely Crappy old grease out. There we go. Now I can see it. 
You need to make a worm or a zet. Oh, that is nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind about packing a bit of extra in here. Just only squeeze it back on, it'll all push any excess out. But, uh, wonderful. So we've got the uh, a trimmer and trains. I'm really soaking this down. It's possible that these could still be asbestos pads. There's nothing to say asbestos. that they are, but um, yeah, there's nothing to say that they aren't. It's probably worthwhile assuming they're nasty. Yeah. Better to be safe than sorry. It is. Why would they put asbestos in brakes? Because it's um, excellent friction material and it's, uh, it's very high um, resistance to heat mm. so it's effectively fireproof so it is a brilliant material for it but unfortunately the, um, the fibres in it when they become airborne they're very small and they can get into uh, your lungs and they cause a uh, cancer called methylocyoma Mm -hmm. which is basically uh, between the uh, outer and inner bits of your lung. Um, so, yeah, we try to steer clear of it. Very make clear. Sure we don't make dust. Same with the clutches. Mm. Okay, so let's come back over here. Now that the chainsawing has stopped, and I'm going to put this into there and that's going to squidge the grease into where I want it to go. Oh, look at that, beautiful. And then when we put that back over the hub, that'll supply new grease to the hub. Oh. Grab the uh, put the uh, bearing on, and there we go. Right now, we've got to seat it and get the car back. Let's get the bearing centralised. So that is now nice and shiny and whilst you were changing the battery on the GoPro yeah. I was doing up the nut, oh. the castle nut and now it's time to put, to put, put the uh, pin back. The cotter pin back in exactly. Um, you might see from that side. <laughs> yep. Uh, see if I can get it to go back in easily.
pack load that out. of green. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely packed. But that's just gonna get in there and uh, maybe hammer it. Yeah, well, I should give it a couple of light taps. really well seated because obviously it's to keep the dust and the muck out of the back. Look at that. Mm. Well that will make it easier for the other ones. Well hopefully so yeah. You can see it yeah. should just go down into space into place there. I'm just holding the uh, weight of the caliper holder because then I can screw it in more easily without it pushing against the thread. So, what have we got? Brake pads look pretty much the same. It's going to zip those over. And you can see they both got the clip on there. So I'm going to place that there. And you can see how much more meat these ones have got on them. Which is why we had to push the pistons right back in. This all just allows the uh, caliper and everything to slide against each other and... Without causing like a screech. Yeah, well, it stops it making a noise and it, uh, you know, you want everything to be going easily. And I'm just going to take a little bit of stuff. I've cleaned off the caliper and I'm going to go around the actual... Bearings. No, not bearings. These Clamps. are... Mm, pistons. This is what actually applies the force. Causing the pads to squeeze together. That's correct, yeah. Let's go into the back. This one should just clip in, hopefully. You're going to have to move that because I can't see. There we go. Right, so that is now up against the disc and obviously we want as much room as possible because we're going to put the caliper over the top of that. So I'm just going to go and do the other one. There we go. That's really nice. Thank you to the engineers at iSuzy for making it really simple. Right, let's just unwind any tension in that. Did you see how I put yeah. it the wrong way around? I really don't want to be uh, pushing it. Okay, let's get these calipers back over here. Maybe a slightly tight fit because oh. the uh, well, the pistons, of course, were needing to be reseated completely. So, where if you do it at the beginning, your life's a lot easier. So, the last thing that we need to do is to uh, check the brake fluid levels. We didn't disassemble this, so it is. Uh, Hopefully all good. Give this a proper tighten up, and then we'll check for a little test drive just in the driveway. Any sponginess in the pedal will uh, bleed the brakes, 
but hopefully we shouldn't need to do that. In this video I am indebted to Old Schools and Tools and I've put his link down in the description below. Um, I've changed brakes on various vehicles and you can see me doing it in another video on the Toyota but working on a truck is another thing entirely and without watching his video I'm not sure I'd have had the confidence to actually tackle this job. Dad's just got uh, bees and I'm really jealous they're absolutely fascinating. I'm actually in their flight path so I'm not going to stay here very long. All out foraging and they only arrived yesterday. Brilliant. So cool. 